Okay, so we are going to be recording this session. So this is the agenda of what we're going to go through in the next hour. Uh, I'll talk briefly about myself, and I'll talk about PMO advisory and who we are. And then I'm going to go over the PMI ACP, um, and with that, talk about Agile and Agile project management, traditional versus Agile, um, the different Agile methodologies, and the PMI ACP application. Um, sounds like a few people are not able to hear. Um, um, T, I'm not sure if there's, can you hear me, T? Um, I'm going to try to unmute everyone and see if that makes any difference. Uh, technically compliant and compelling response, um, but also we have. Um, <laughs> um, if I unmute everybody, it's, there's too much background noise, unfortunately. Can can people hear me now? Okay, so good, good. I just unmuted and remuted, so maybe that fixed the problem. Um, so then we'll talk about next steps and then how to claim your PDO from this presentation. Okay, so a little bit about myself. Um, uh, about a dozen years experience as an instructor and consultant of project management best practices. Uh, a, a bunch more years as a consultant, um, but in the last uh, decade and more, I've been doing a lot of teaching. So I do teaching and consulting with PMO advisory. I've um, been developing um, instructional material for PMI certifications, and I have 25 years of engineering and software development industry experience. So a little bit about PMO advisory. We are a registered educational provider of PMI, and that is our uh, number for that, which I'll give you at the end, too, because you'll need that for your PDUs. It's uh, 4172. Uh, we're a project management training and consulting company, and we specialize in strategic implementation and bring together professionals that uh, associated with business execution. This includes portfolio management, program management, project management, risk management, and agile project management. Um, we're an aspiring B Corp. And our mission is to help students and professionals improving their careers through training, certification, and hands-on experience. Um, and I'm delighted to be part of the team that provides that on a regular basis. So when we look at the PMI ACP certification, I wanted to first go over what the value is to you as an individual. So if you think about uh, in, as far as your career is concerned, um, salary, um, what your options are. Uh, having this PMI ACP certification is going to give you a, a little bit of an edge on others, um, especially if many of the people you work with have a PMP certification. I was just actually uh, providing some consulting this morning to someone on that. They were asking about uh, some career um, suggestions. And what I said to them is the certification is going to go a long way, especially with PMI, because it doesn't just show competency, but it also shows experience. So uh, the PMI ACP certification is going to help you to uh, differentiate between um, yourself and others, and hopefully that's, that's um, a valuable thing for you in your career. It also highlights your subject matter expertise and specific experience in agile project management. Um, some data that we have is the salary of a certified PMI ACP as a certified practitioner is about 28% higher than non-certified professional, so that's important. Um, it also helps increase your marketability to potential clients, existing clients, or employers, um, and it demonstrates a commitment to professional development and ongoing education. Um, you're also able to obtain PDUs that help maintain your PMP credential. So PMI, if you have a PMP credential and a PMI ACP credential, Anything you do to get additional PDUs for your PMI ACP certification will also carry over into your PMP credential. So that's a very nice thing to have. 
additional value for the PMI-ACP credential um, from the organizational level, you have the certification providing different methodologies of Agile. So not only the Scrum framework or the Scrum method, but the PMI-ACP covers multiple methods that are part of Agile, and that is something that's significantly different. Um, many of the uh, certifications that are out there for Agile are specifically for Scrum. The PMI-ACP is not only for Scrum. Since most companies tend to use multiple Agile methods or blending of these methods, the PMI-ACP certification supports this better. Um, so that's another reason this might be valuable. As far as for projects, uh, organizations that are Agile and responsive to market dynamics are able to complete more of their projects successfully than slower moving counterparts. Um, so you see some, some data on this. Um, there's actually uh, a report that has been provided on an annual basis by version one uh, talking about the success of agile project management that highlights some of these benefits. <clears throat> so what is agile? Agile is a set of principles that guide teams, and they also guide development. Agile is a culture shift. It's a shift in the way an organization or a team uh, looks at projects, looks at product development, and how they work with their stakeholders and within the team themselves. Agile is a great solution for some types of projects but it may not be the best solution for all types of projects. Uh, that's why we still have traditional managed projects and Agile projects that are managed. Agile supports open communication, and that is between the team members, stakeholders, and customers, and it is very different from traditional project management, and, and we'll get into talking about that. So um, I want to first start by busting some Agile myths. As an, an Agile generalist who um, provides a lot of training and does conferences and presentations on Agile, um, what I've found is there are a lot of myths about Agile. Um, one is that Agile works for any project. Um, you can use Agile for any project, but it may not be the most beneficial and efficient. Um, so uh, the next is Agile is new and better. Actually, Agile's been around since the 90s, so that's not exactly new. Um, Agile is faster, not necessarily. If you know all of the requirements for the project up front and there are no changes to that requirements or minimal changes, um, Agile will not necessarily be a faster way to complete that project. Agile is unstructured. Well, that's certainly not true. Uh, Agile has many methods, and each of those methods have their own structure and guidelines that support that method. So it's really important to follow uh, the method that you're using for Agile and to follow the structure that it has. The structure is definitely different than traditional project management. And then what we see in the PMBOK under a predictive project life cycle, it's a different structure, but it does have its own structure. Agile doesn't have documentation. Well, that's not true. Um, there may be different types of documentation. It may not be as thick of documentation. Um, there's not as much upfront planning in Agile, but there's a lot more incremental planning in Agile, and documentation is required for all of that. The documentation we have in Agile is just what we need to be able to communicate, and it's not additional documentation that doesn't create value. And you'll hear that word a lot, value, when it comes to Agile. Our focus is on providing the most value to our customers. So if a document doesn't provide value, then we're certainly not going to have it. However, there are many documents that do provide value and are needed when doing an Agile project. Agile doesn't need requirements. Well, that's not true at all. Uh, one of my colleagues said they were working on a project and the customers insisted that they didn't need requirements because it was an Agile project. And I said to her, well, just tell them that you're finished with the project then. And she said, well, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll just be like, what are you talking about? And I'll say, you know, well, show me a requirement 
that I haven't met. And, you know, if there are no requirements, then you're done. So obviously, Agile needs requirements. All projects need requirements. The nice thing with Agile projects is you can continue to gather requirements throughout the project life cycle. You don't need them all up front as you do with a predictive or traditional project management approach. Agile is cheaper, not necessarily, but it is focused on value again. So what is the value we're providing to the customer? And Agile, the team gets to do what they want. No, absolutely not. The team does what's of value to the customer, and the customer needs to be integrated in Agile in prioritizing what the requirements are and what has the greatest value. Agile is easy. Well, nothing's, nothing's completely easy. Everything takes some effort, right? So what is not Agile? Agile is not the solution to all project management problems. If you're using Agile, and you're thinking that that is going to solve every problem you have in project management, it is probably not. Instead, what an Agile implementation usually does is it makes it clear how your project or project team, every way that it is not Agile. If there are communication problems, it's going to be more of a problem when you're using Agile. If there's uh, problems uh, understanding requirements, understanding the customer, engaging with the customer, those are going to be more prevalent and more obvious. What is not Agile? Well, it's, it's not a toolbox of methodologies to be used as needed. Um, you really want to pick the Agile method that you're using. And if you're using a hybrid method, you want to clearly define what that looks like. So if you're going to use a combination of traditional and a specific Agile method, you want to clearly define that. You don't just want to pick and choose like you would at the buffet, because the unfortunate thing is you might end up just at the dessert line and not getting any of the things you really, really need. So you want to make sure you're following a prescribed method, and, and you're going to select what Agile method that is, but you don't just want to pick and choose from within that method what you use and don't use. Agile is not the replacement for traditional project management processes. So we're not just going to simply say, okay, instead of doing this process, we're going to do Agile for this, for this process, but then we're going to use this other process. So again, you can't just mix and match, match like that. Agile is also not a specific method for projects to use. It, there are a number of Agile methods. So there is no, when somebody says we're using Agile, the next question I ask is, well, which method are you using? Which, which Agile method? Agile is more of an approach. Just like predictive um, project management is an approach, or traditional project management is an approach. And then I might ask the person, well, well which um, actual method are you using for that? And somebody might say, oh, we're following the PMBOK guide or, or we're following some other process. Agile is also not a reason to not collect requirements, as I mentioned in the myth. We, we need to collect requirements. We need to understand customer needs. It's also not a way to complete projects without following processes. Okay, so we, we're, we're going to have, um, for whatever Agile method we select, we're going to have uh, guidelines that we need to follow. So we're still going to need to follow those, and they may be different than traditional project management. So why would we use an Agile approach? Agile principles and practices, they're used to manage change. So if we have a project where scope is very likely to change or there's a high level of uncertainty in the scope for the project, then Agile would be a good approach to use. We might also use Agile to improve communication both within the team and with other project stakeholders outside of the team. Agile can reduce costs, particularly for a project where the scope has a high level of uncertainty and is likely to change. Agile can increase efficiency. So um, it can help us be more efficient in what we deliver to the customer and ensure that we're providing the greatest value to our customer and other stakeholders. It can also decrease project risk 
aka uncertainty, particularly in the area of scope. So when do we use Agile? We want to consider using an Agile approach for a project when one or more of the following conditions are present. Uncertainty, complexity, innovation, or urgency. What we mean about uncertainty, particularly in the areas of, area of requirements or scope, where there could be changing conditions for that project. When we see that, an Agile approach may be the best one to use. If a project has a high level of complexity, being the content, that it's integration with other systems or other projects, stakeholder management has high level complexity, or the product solution is complex, then we might consider using Agile. Innovation. Whenever we see something as being innovative, we see that there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of risk with that. That being said, innovation types of projects are best suited to using an Agile approach. This would be like a new technology, new content, a new system, something that's never been done before. And then lastly, urgency. If we see that a project has a high level of urgency, being that the customers need something immediately, maybe the project lasts a year long, but they really need something in the next few months, some part of it completed, that would lend itself to Agile, because Agile is incremental in its delivery. So with that, we could actually provide some parts that could be useful to the customer early on, even before the end of the project. With a traditional or predictive project management approach, we'll have to wait till the end of the project to deliver something to the customer. So when a project has a high level of urgency, we'll consider using the Agile approach. So when we talk about Agile project management, one of the first things we want to mention or make sure we're all on board with is the Agile Manifesto. I said that Agile is about a set of principles and practices. So with that, the Agile Manifesto provides this, this, this foundation for where Agile projects fit and how they differ from traditional projects. So if you go to www.agilemanifesto.org, you will actually see this Agile Manifesto, and then also a link to the 12 Principles of Agile, uh, which I'm not providing today, but you can go find there. Fundamentally, it comes down to these four statements. We have come to value individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Working software, or you could say working product, if this is not a software product, over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following a plan. What we're saying here is while there is value in the items on the right, we value the items on the left more, which means that we're more interested in working with our customer, providing them working product, and, deal and working with people and focusing on people and the value they bring and responding to customer change, then we are on focusing on processes, tools, documentation, contract negotiation, and following the plan. You can see it's very value driven. So what does Agile entail? Agile project characteristics, they're iterative, incremental, and time boxed. What we mean by time boxed is that there is a time allocated to do the work. If, if work is not done within the time allocated, it is still completed. That's not how we, we operate in traditional project management. So for example, if we have an iteration that is supposed to last a month and we get to the end of the month and we haven't done all the work that we plan to do in that month, we still end that iteration. We then take a look at what we've done, what we haven't done, we assess that, and then we plan for the next iteration. But we don't just continue doing the work. In traditional project management, we have to get all the work done. We're not doing it incrementally, so we just continue until the work is done. And if that means we need to get more money, be over budget, or maybe we're behind schedule, uh, whatever that means, we have to get all the work done. So that time box is a key part about Agile projects. Agile projects require trust, commitment, and flexibility not just by the team members, but by all project stakeholders. This can be a challenge in some organizations 
So it's something to consider before using Agile in your organization or doing an Agile project. We also need to understand business priorities. This gets back to what I said before about value. So understanding business priorities helps us to evaluate the value of different requirements. So if we don't understand what's important to the business, we won't understand what the value a particular requirement has. Agile also requires a significant stakeholder engagement, as I mentioned before. This sounds like a good thing, but it could be a challenge in certain environments where stakeholders are not used to being engaged. Many stakeholders may be used to giving requirements and then, you know, six months later or a year later they get what they asked for and they're not used to being engaged on maybe a weekly or biweekly or even a daily basis. So this is a huge part of what Agile entails. So Agile projects, if you're familiar with traditional project management, there may be some uh, projects that you've worked on that actually have an element of Agile to them, but you had not realized that. For example, rolling weight planning, which is a type of progressive elaboration, where we do planning further on as we go through the project. So as we start the project, we do some planning for the first uh, part of work that we're going to be doing or the first phase. And then we plan for the next phase before we're done with that phase. So we may have some high-level planning, but we'll do the detailed planning as we go through the project life cycle from the start towards the finish of the project. And that's what we mean by rolling weight planning. We also can have any, any project that is iterative or incremental delivery is really an agile project because it's not delivering all at the end of the project. A project where we're focused on rapid and flexible response to change would also be an agile type of project. Um, open communication is clearly a part of all of that. And um, work delivered to customers in small, frequent releases. So when we see that we're delivering a product to the customer at the end of the project only, then that wouldn't be an agile project. But if we're delivering small, frequent releases, then that is an agile type of project. So what is traditional project management? Well, we have a project management plan. We do a lot of upfront planning. We have regular status reporting. This can include the issue log and a risk register and other project documents. We have facilitation of meetings. We have a management hierarchy. Um, work is delegated to people on the team. The project manager delegates the work to their team members. And then we have deliverables that are reviewed and approved. In Agile project management, we have planning, but that planning is incremental. So we're doing a little piece of planning at a time. So in the end, we may end up doing even more planning than we did in traditional, but we're not doing all of it up front. Why is that? Well, we're trying to deal with the risk of changing requirements. So if that's the case, we're only going to do planning for a few of the requirements at a time. We're going to then do the development, deliver that, and then revisit the requirements, reprioritize them, and do the requirements that are in the next highest priority. And we're going to continue to do that throughout the project, which means that at any given time, requirements can be added to our list of requirements. And that's called a product backlog. This allows a customer to have changing requirements, even changing priorities to requirements, and we can adapt to that. In Agile project management, we have transparent daily reporting. Teams manage themselves. We have meetings that are daily, uh, planning for each iteration, and a retrospective or iteration review that occurs at the end of an iteration. We have frequent deliverables, which are focused on providing value to the customer. So we're not going to wait till the end of the project deliver something to the customer. So when we talk about project management, we, we want to think about project constraints. And we've mentioned scope and cost and time. And each of those has a certain amount of uncertainty with them. In traditional project management, we have a, a fixed scope. We know what the customer wants. And then we estimate our cost and time in relation to that. 
So one of the things to understand, this is called the triple constraint, is that if scope changes in a project, then there's going to be an impact on cost or time. Okay, and so one of the reasons that Agile developed as a, a popular project management methodology is because we have a lot of projects where there's a great deal of scope uncertainty. And so how do we deal with that? Because every time there's a scope change, we can we can have an impact to our cost or an impact to our time. We definitely don't want to impact our quality. Um, so our quality is our customer satisfaction. We want that, that to remain the same no matter what happens. And you see risk here in gray, but you can kind of think of it as a bubble around all of this. It's the uncertainty related with scope, cost, and time. So if you look at this comparison, if we see the triple constraint and we compare between traditional project processes and agile or adaptive project processes, we see that in traditional project management, we're very plan driven. Okay, our requirements are fixed, or our scope is fixed, and we estimate the schedule and cost based on that fixed scope. In agile, we flip that around. We actually have time boxed activities, so our schedule is fixed, our cost is fixed because we have a certain team size and duration for the project. And then what we do is we estimate the scope or features that we complete within this time box and cost fixed uh, set of, of, of time. So let's say it's two weeks or four weeks is a time frame for the iteration that has a specific cost associated with it, which is fixed, the time is fixed, and then we're estimating what type of work can we complete during that fixed time. So we see um, the very significant difference in how traditional project management and agile project management deals with the triple constraint. So what are some agile methodologies? Well, some of these include Scrum, that's a, probably the most popular and most pervasive. Uh, Kanban, you may be familiar with a task board or a work in, work in progress task board. That actually comes from Kanban. Uh, I use Kanban for one of my clients. We do all of our projects through Kanban, so we're using the, the Kanban Agile method. Um, extreme programming, this is most specifically focused on software development. Uh, paired programming is, is one uh, key practice that's used in extreme programming. Uh, we also have Lean. Uh, somebody the other day had a conversation with me about Lean and Agile and what's the difference between them. Well, Lean's been around longer than Agile has been, but Lean is considered an Agile method. Um, and then uh, DSCM, um, DSCM is a, we're not going to get into the details of all of these, but um, DSCM is another Agile method. Um, and um, which of these, I guess, something to consider yourself, which of these are you familiar with, and which of these um, do you uh, want to learn more about? You can certainly do um, some searching online and learn more about each of these. So with that, I want to now talk about the PMI ACP certification. So this is a, a screenshot of uh, PMI's website. So um, this is where you can find out more information. If you go to certifications and you select PMI ACP, uh, you'll see some information about that. And uh, they update this from time to time, so the screen might look a little bit different. But it, it provides you with information on, on who should apply and what are the requirements. And what PMI says is that the, the ACP recognizes knowledge of Agile principles, practices, and tools and techniques across different Agile methods, okay, or different Agile methodologies. Um, by for earning the PMI ACP certification, practitioners can demonstrate to their employees their level of professionalism in Agile principles, practices, tools, and techniques. Um, increase their professional versatility in project management tools and techniques, and hold a certification that 
is more credible than simply offering based only on exams or training. So one of the things um, one of my colleagues was, was recently talking about was they knew somebody had gotten uh, an ASL certification, and that was great, but it, it didn't show that they had any experience. It just showed that they took a class and they passed the test. And um, that doesn't have a lot of credibility with it. Whereas with PMI, uh, you actually have to submit your Agile experience. Um, you need to have a significant amount of Agile experience in order to get this certification. Okay? So that's what PMI has to say. So who should apply? Those that are using Agile practices or someone who's in an organization that is adapting Agile methods. Earning the PMI Agile Certified Practitioner Certification is going to demonstrate your knowledge and commitment to this growing approach of project management. And I'm sure everybody's heard a lot about Agile, and that's why you're here, to learn more about it. Um, I don't believe I have a customer or colleague that does not have some at least inquiry in their organization about using Agile if they're not already using a Agile method. So we talked about experience and the PMI ACP certification. PMI requires that an applicant for the certification have 2,000 hours of general project experience working on teams. This does not have to specifically be Agile experience. If you have a PMP certification or PGMP, which is the Program Management Certification, that will satisfy this requirement. Okay? However, you do not need to have one of those certifications to apply for your PMI ACP. So you do not need a PMP cert or a PGMP. But it is nice to know that if you do have it, this part of the experience is already satisfied. Other experience that is necessary for the PMI ACP certification includes 1,500 hours working on Agile project teams or with Agile methodologies. This is in addition to the 2,000 hours of general project experience. So what PMI is looking for is they are looking for applicants for the PMI ACP to have both general project experience and hours working specifically with Agile methodologies. There's also an educational requirement of 21 contact hours of training in Agile practices. For example, this presentation today would be an hour of PDU. Um, that would be towards that educational requirement. The application and exam. The application processing takes, I'm saying, three to five days. Sometimes it can take longer than that. Um, I don't think I've ever heard it taking longer than, than two weeks. Um, but the processing of the application will just depend on PMI and how many other people are submitting applications for their certification at the same time. Generally speaking, I've seen it take three to five days. A subset of applications are randomly audited to verify experience in education. I always tell people there's nothing to worry about if you're just tell the truth. And if you are audited, you'll be asked for additional information. So what I request that people do is if you have some some, a few projects that you have a lot of hours on that you submit those rather than a number of projects that you have a few hours on. Should you be audited, it's a little bit more work that you have to do. Um, people do get audited and it is becoming more common than it used to be. But again, if you tell the truth and you detail your experience in education as it is, you should have no problem passing the audit. The exam itself is three hours, and you answer 120 multiple choice questions. Um, some of those questions don't count towards your grade. Um, they're using them to just uh, evaluate new question material, um, and you don't know which questions those are. 
So it's a shorter exam. For those of you who may have taken the PMP certification, it's a shorter exam than the PMP certification. It has less questions. And uh, I would say in general it's an easier exam because it, it has less, um, uh, less detailed content that, that's needed. However, you do need to understand more than one Agile method. I would say the one uh, concern is going to take, take this exam only knowing the Scrum method. That's it, not going to be good for this exam because um, there are questions in there that don't just apply to the Scrum method. You need to know more generally about Agile project management, and you want to know about some other methods other than just Scrum. And again, your experience can overlap with the PMP application if you do have your PMP, which is also not required. The resources you would use for this exam and to prepare for it are PMI's Agile Practice Guide. If you're a member of PMI, this is free as a PDF download. In fact, the Agile Practice Guide comes with the PMBOK Guide in the PDF download for the PMBOK Guide. So it's about 900 something pages. Um, so they come together in the PDF and if you are a member, then you have a free access to the Agile Practice Guide, which you definitely want to read, review, and use for your studying for this PMI ACP exam. There's also the PMI ACP Credential Handbook. This outlines the application requirements and can be useful to you as you complete your application online. Oftentimes, people have questions for me about the application and how to complete it, I always go to the Credential Handbook. It details that information and it also shares what the PDU requirements are after you receive your certification for continuing education. Because PMI also has a continuing education requirement to keep your, your certification after you receive it. Lastly is the exam content outline. This is also free on the PMI website. And I don't even think you need to be a member to access this. And what it tells you is it tells you what's included in the PMI ACP exam. So it's very important to read over this at least once because this is the handbook and it's pretty thin, it's not very long, that shares with you what's on this certification exam. So the exam itself includes uh, two content areas, Agile tools and techniques, and Agile skills and knowledge. The knowledge and skills part is 50% is of the exam, and those areas are listed in that exam content outline that I just uh, referred to. The tools and techniques include things like communication, planning, monitoring and adaptation, Agile estimation, Agile analysis and design, product quality, soft skills negotiation, value-based prioritization, risk management, metrics, and value stream analysis. So those are some of the tools and techniques that you'll want to know and learn about before you take this certification exam. PMI provides, uh, provides the content or, or organizes the content with these domains. So these seven domains are what you're attested on, and the percentage here is showing you what percentage of exam questions are based in these different domains. So you see that the majority, um, or the, the most of the questions come on focused on value-driven delivery, which makes a lot of sense, because remember I said how Agile is so focused on value and what provides value to the customer. And then stakeholder engagement, obviously, because engaging with our customer is an important aspect when we're trying to deliver value to them. And then also the Agile principles and mindset, which would include the Agile manifesto and 12 principles, and team performance. And it's the way the team operates and the team working together is a very important part of Agile. And then you see the, the last three there are also covered, but in less percentage of questions on the exam. How would you apply for the PMI ACP application? Well, you would go online to 
cmi.org and get some more information in the handbook we mentioned in the exam content outline. And I provide a link here, or you can just go to cmi.org, select certification, pick CMI ACT, and then follow um, the prompts for that and how to complete an application. You do not need to be a PMI member to start your application. However, you will probably want to be a PMI member before you actually register for an exam, because as a member, you'll receive a discount on your exam um, fee, and that discount is pretty much equivalent to your membership fee. So that makes it um, a wash and basically provides you with that free PDF of the Agile Practice Guide, which you're going to need for preparing for this exam. So why would you want your PMI ACP? These are some, some reasons to consider it over some other Scrum certifications. Um, unless you're strictly adhering to one particular type of project, software development, or web design, the PMI ACP is going to be more generally applicable. Uh, Scrum is a very specific methodology. And while it's powerful with some types of projects, its uses are more limiting. For example, I explained one of my customers, we use Kanban. Uh, the reason we use Kanban is because the Scrum method just wouldn't work for the types of projects we do. Uh, the projects have a lot of variety, and there's a lot of different team members working on different projects at the same time. And we evaluated it and realized that Scrum was not a good fit. So we use Kanban. So, uh, PMI ACP is great because it, it focuses on more than one methodology. It's not just focused on Scrum. So for traditional project managers, the PMI ACP is an excellent complement to any other PMI certification that you may already have, like your PMP, your PGMP, your PFMP, or even your PMI RMP, which is a risk management professional. PMI is a globally recognized body for its rigor and excellence and it stands behind its certifications. As we mentioned, um, this, this certification does not just show competency and knowledge, but also validates your experience that you have. So with um, the other uh, certifications that are out there, there are a number of SCRUM certifications, and unfortunately there's, there's multiple certifying bodies, which actually causes some confusion and a little bit to lose the influence of that. Um, in fact, uh, I did a lot of research for a while trying to figure out, you know, what certification for Scrum was best because there's so many uh, different certifying bodies. Um, what's nice with PMI is it's recognized um, by a lot of organizations, even the federal government um, highly recognizes it and appreciates what it stands for. So what are the next steps? Um, if you're interested to pursue um, Agile, either in learning a little bit more about it or getting a certification, um, we at PMO Advisory offer two courses for people in general. Um, there's one is called the Agile and Scrum Fundamental Workshop. And this is a, uh, a live virtual one-day class. And it's for anyone who's interested in, in gaining additional knowledge on Agile and Scrum and um, you'll work with the instructor, which is likely going to be myself, and with people in the classroom. And you're going to be able to learn and apply best practices that, to agile project management problems. So it's a great opportunity to just really engage and learn a lot more about how you can use agile in uh, doing the work that you currently do and where it may be applicable. The Agile PMI ACP, or Agile Certified Practitioner Certification Exam Prep Course, is also offered by us. It's a two-day class, which is actually really a great deal because um, oftentimes it's a three-day class, and we uh, put it down to two days to really give you a, a great thing for your buck. Um, it's for anyone who's interested in pursuing their PMI ACP certification. And although it's a two-day class, we augment it with some online training. And that online training will allow you to still get those 21 PDUs that you need towards your educational requirements. So that's really important. The one-day Agile and Scrum Fundamentals class 
is also going to be able to be used towards that requirement, but will only be uh, APDUs for that one day. Also, with the PMI ACP, we provide practice questions and quizzes to help prep you for this exam. So for more information, you can visit our website and look up PMI ACP, or you can click on that link. Uh, we will be providing this presentation to all attendees, so if there's any parts that you didn't quite get notes on or any screens that you want more information on, we'll be providing that to you. So for any institutional customers that are on the line, uh, we offer three classes in Agile-related training. One is the Agile and Scrum Fundamentals Workshop that I just mentioned. Um, it's an eight-hour class, but that includes a, a lunch break, so you earn seven PDUs. And then there's the Agile Project Management Boot Camp, the PMI ACP, which includes a classroom and live virtual. It's 16 hours and earns 14 PDUs. Uh, the last option is the PMI ACP application workshop, and this is a live virtual only and is a four hour long workshop. So please work with your company representative if you're a, a work with a come from a company and to inquire about this course and contact us via this email just provided here. And um, if your firm is not able to make one of those courses available, you're welcome to join in one of our public courses that I just talked about in the previous slide. Okay, so important information for claiming your PDU for this webinar today. Um, for those of you who are PMI certified, um, this webinar will earn you one PDU and you can claim it uh, using these instructions. And again, these will be provided to you in the presentation uh, after today. And the important thing is to remember the provider number 4172 for PMO advisory. Okay. Uh, mark your calendar. We have another webinar coming up. It's called Redefining Project Management and Unleashing Its Power, How They, Projects, Program, Portfolio, Risk, Agile, and PMO all come together to deliver true value. So it really resonates with what we've been talking about this morning. So hopefully you can join us for that. Uh, Dr. T. Wu will be doing that presentation on September 25th at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, now we have an opportunity for questions. Um, there's a lot of people online, so I can't just unmute, but we're more than happy to take questions. Please, please post them in the chat box, and I will be able to see them and answer them. I can answer them aloud. So if you just, any questions that you have on Agile, on any of the methods that we've, we, you know, really glossed over because there's a lot of methods of Agile, that any of the methods that we mentioned, or the ACT exam, or any future training, uh, please feel free to ask questions. We have about uh, 10 minutes, so, so ask away. And again, just a reminder that we will be sending you a link to download the presentation. And I believe we will also provide you with the recording. I know some people were having some audio issues in the beginning, so hopefully that will help. Uh, somebody asked about just attending this presentation does not mean you're qualified. No, this is an overview to provide you with information over what the qualifications would be if you do want to apply for PMI and ACT. Um, if you are already a uh, PMP or have another PMI certification, um, this webinar could be used towards continuing education for that. Um, uh, T is asking a question, have you ever had a situation between choosing between traditional waterfall versus agile? Uh, Yes, oftentimes this comes up at the beginning of a project. Um, what will be the best approach? And I do use uh, that assessment that I talked about early on, is what is the complexity, what is the uncertainty, what is the urgency, and what is the innovation of the project? And I actually look at each of those, and if I see that the project has 
at one or more of those, then I would be interested in using an agile approach. And sometimes what that results in is maybe there are some traditional uh, project documents that are needed, maybe some high-level upfront planning is needed because that's what my customer needs. But the way we actually do development for the project, we use Agile. That would be considered a hybrid approach, and sometimes that's the right thing to do. Are there any other questions? Again, if you've had any issues with, with the audio, we will be providing you with the full recording. Um, and a, a link to download the presentation. Uh, I truly hope this has been valuable for everyone. Um, Agile is, um, is a great uh, approach for projects, and I hope that you see that now. And um, look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions, uh, feel free uh, to contact us. We have some contact information there. And with that, um, I want to go back to how to claim your PDU. And if there's no other questions, um, please uh, have a wonderful rest of the day. And if you have any questions that come up, uh, please do contact us. Okay, and you'll see that contact information in the slide presentation we'll share with you. Thank you, everyone, everybody, and have a great day.